Welcome to a brief introduction to HIV and AIDS. HIV and AIDS can make you very sick and even cause your death. If you follow the instructions in this video, you can reduce your risk of being infected with HIV, the cause of AIDS. This may save your life, the lives of any current or future sexual partners, and the lives of any children you may have. AIDS is the final stage of infection by a virus called HIV. When a person becomes infected with HIV, HIV weakens the body's ability to fight disease. Initially, and sometimes for many years, the person may show no signs of being ill. A person can be infected with HIV and not even know it. When a person first becomes infected, HIV tests will not yet show that they are infected. Even before a person's test positive for HIV, it's possible for them to infect others, and they're highly infectious during this time. If HIV does enough damage to the body's ability to fight disease, the person becomes more likely to get infections that a healthy person's body would fight off. When this happens, we say that the HIV positive person has AIDS. Only a medical professional can diagnose a person with AIDS by following accepted medical criteria. Without medical treatment, the person may die. How does HIV spread? You cannot become infected with HIV from saliva, sweat, or tears. You cannot become infected with HIV by living, working, eating, or shaking hands with a person who is HIV positive. HIV is present in an infected person's blood, an infected man's ejaculation fluid called semen, an infected woman's vaginal fluid, and breast milk. HIV typically spreads when one person's body fluids like blood, semen, vaginal fluid, or breast milk come in contact with an opening in another person's body like the vagina, mouth, penis, anus, or breaks in the skin. There are three ways that HIV is commonly spread today. The first way HIV spreads is sexual contact. This is by far the most common way that HIV is spread. When two people have sex, HIV may spread from the partner to the other partner. The more sexual partners you have, the greater your risk of being infected with HIV. The second way HIV spreads is sharing of needles by injection drug users. If a person with HIV uses a needle to inject a drug, some of their blood gets in and on the needle. If another person uses that same dirty needle, the other person may become infected as a result. The third way HIV spreads is mother-to-child transmission. If a pregnant woman has HIV, the unborn child may become infected. Most commonly this happens during childbirth. After birth, the child breastfeeds, the child may become infected through breast milk. What can you do to reduce your risk of being infected with HIV? If you have sex, you can do several things to greatly reduce your risk. First, make sure that you know whether you are infected with HIV and whether your partner is infected with HIV. A simple, quick blood test or oral sample where they take a swab of the inside of your mouth can tell you whether you are HIV positive. In most countries, this test is available free of charge. Remember that when a person first becomes infected, HIV tests will not yet show that they are infected. Second, use a latex condom correctly every time you have sex, every way you have sex. This includes vaginal sex, anal sex, and oral sex. A latex condom is not a guarantee against HIV transmission, but when used correctly, it greatly reduces the risk that one partner will infect the other. To use a condom correctly, you must put it on the hard penis before any contact between the penis and the partner's body. When putting the condom on, leave a little extra space at the tip to hold the semen 
and unroll the condom down the shaft all the way. Do not pull the condom over the penis like you would pull a sock over a foot. After the man ejaculates, he should hold the condom at the base of the shaft to make sure it doesn't fall off and immediately remove his penis from his partner before it becomes soft. This will reduce the risk that the condom will leak. Afterwards, throw the condom away. Third, if you have any other sexually transmitted diseases such as syphilis, gonorrhea, or chlamydia, get them treated since they increase the risk of HIV transmission. Fourth, if you are a sexually active heterosexual man, consider being circumcised by a medical professional. Studies in Uganda, Kenya, and South Africa showed that medically performed circumcision with counseling reduces a man's risk of being infected with HIV through heterosexual sex by about half. Circumcision is not a guarantee against HIV infection it is also not a substitute for safer practices like using a condom. Circumcised men must continue to use condoms just like uncircumcised men for their own protection and for the protection of their partner. Fifth, if you had sex with someone you think is HIV positive or whose HIV status you're unsure of, immediately contact a doctor and ask them if post-exposure prophylaxis is right for you. In post-exposure prophylaxis, you take HIV medication for a month after you think you may have been exposed to HIV. Typically, you must begin PEP treatment within 72 hours of when you were potentially exposed. After 72 hours, medications do not help decrease transmission. Sixth, if you think you may have been exposed to HIV through sex, on an ongoing basis, ask your doctor if pre-exposure prophylaxis is right for you. PrEP uses HIV medication to decrease the risk of becoming infected with HIV. You take a pill that blocks the virus. This decreases your risk of contracting HIV. It is important to take the pill as your doctor prescribes to minimize your risk of contracting HIV. Patients often say that they find it hard to remember to take every dose of their medication as prescribed. Do your best to follow your doctor's instructions as closely as possible. Fortunately, a study has shown that even if you take PrEP medication only four times a week, you still reduce your risk of contracting HIV. You can ask your physician to prescribe the medication to you. Not all physicians will be willing to prescribe it, and not all insurance companies will be willing to pay for it. You may need to ask your local HIV AIDS agencies to help you. We understand that if you lack money or live in a culture where you do not have equal rights, you may not be able to follow these guidelines. Efforts to provide all people access to prevention, education, condoms, HIV testing, and AIDS medication are also important. Sharing of needles among injection drug users is one of the most common ways HIV is transmitted. If you use injection drugs, never use a dirty needle to inject. You cannot be infected with HIV from a new, clean, unused, sterile needle that you just removed from its package. As an absolute last resort, if you are about to use a dirty needle to inject a drug, you can clean the needle and syringe thoroughly inside and out with a bleach solution and then rinse it with water to reduce your risk of being infected with HIV. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention now recommends that pre-exposure prophylaxis also be considered as one of several possible methods of HIV prevention for injection drug users who are at high risk of contracting HIV. If you are getting married, get tested for HIV. Have your partner get tested as well and discuss your test results together. Some people do not have sex before marriage but then become infected with HIV from their spouse. 
their spouse may not have realized they were HIV positive or may have known it and not said anything. If you are pregnant, get tested for HIV, even if you feel sure you're not at risk. An HIV positive woman can reduce the risk of transmitting HIV to her baby by using HIV medications under a doctor's direction. After delivery, if a woman has reliable access to clean water and infant formula, she can further reduce the risk by feeding the child with formula instead of breastfeeding. But in a developing world, a doctor may recommend that an HIV positive woman who is on HIV medications breastfeed instead of using formula because for infants in the developing world, the benefits of breastfeeding can outweigh the risk. Getting tested for HIV and following your doctor's instructions if you're HIV positive can save your child's life. If you are already HIV positive, what can you do to avoid transmitting it? Before you have sex, tell your partner that you are HIV positive so you can discuss together how to prevent transmission. Use a condom correctly every time you have sex, every way you have sex. The World Health Organization now recommends that all HIV positive people begin treatment with HIV medications as soon as possible after diagnosis. So take your HIV medications on schedule at the doses prescribed by your doctor. No matter who you are, you're a valuable individual and your life matters, as do the lives of those around you. Take care of yourself and those around you. Make healthy choices that reduce your risk of being infected with HIV. For AIDSvideos.org, this is Dr. Becky Kuhn.